from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. Special coverage sponsored by AWS Global Partner Network. Hello and welcome to theCUBE virtual and our coverage of AWS reInvent 2020 and our special coverage of APN Partner Experience. We are theCUBE Virtual and I'm your host, Justin Warren. And today I'm joined by Mike Gilfix, who is the Chief Product Officer for IBM Cloud Packs. Mike, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thanks for having me. Now, Cloud Packs is, is a new thing from IBM. I'm not particularly familiar with it, but it's it's related to IBM's partnership with, with AWS. So maybe you could just start us off quickly by explaining what is Cloud Packs and, and what's your role as, as Chief Product Officer there? Well, CloudPax is sort of our next generation platform. What we've been doing is bringing the power of IBM software, really across the board, and bringing it to a hybrid cloud environment. So making it really easy for our customers to consume it wherever, wherever they want, however they want to choose to do it with a consistent skill set and making it really easy to kind of get those things up and running and deliver value quickly. And this is part of IBM's hybrid approach. So what we've seen is, Organizations that can leverage the same skill set and, you know, basically take those workloads, make them run where they need to, yields about a two and a half times ROI. And CloudPack sit at the center of that, running on the OpenShift platform. So they get consistent security, skills, and powerful software to run their business, running everywhere. And we've been partnering with AWS because we want to make sure that those customers that have made that choice can get access to those capabilities easy and as fast as possible. Right, and, and the cloud packs are built on the Red Hat Open, I, now let me get this right, it's the Open Hybrid Cloud Platform. So is that OpenShift? It is OpenShift, yes. I mean, Terrific. IBM is incredibly committed to being to open software and OpenShift does provide that common layer. And the reason that's important is you want consistent security, you want to avoid lock-in, Right, that gives you a very powerful platform, a fabric, if you will, that can truly run anywhere with any workload. And we've been working very closely with AWS to make sure that is a, a premier first class experience on AWS. Yeah, so the, the uh, OpenShift on AWS is, is relatively new from IBM. So could you explain what is OpenShift on AWS and how does that differ from the OpenShift that people may be already familiar with? Well, the, the kernel, if you will, is the same. It's the same sort of central open source software, but in working closely with AWS, we're now making those things available as simple services that you can quickly provision and run. And that makes it really easy for people to get started, but again, sort of carrying forward that, that same sort of skill set. So that's kind of a key way in which we see that you can gain that sort of consistency, you know, no matter where you're running that workflow. And we've been investing in that integration, working closely with Amazon. Right, and we, we all know Red Hat's commitment to uh, to open source software and the open ecosystems. Red Hat is rightly famous for it. And I, I am old enough to remember when it was a brand new thing, particularly in enterprise, to, to allow open source to, to come in and, and have anything to do with workloads. And now it's it's all the rage and people are running quite critical workloads on it. So what are you seeing uh, in the adoption within the enterprise of open software? Uh, the adoption is massive. I, I, I think, well, first let me describe what's driving it. I mean, people want to tap into innovation. And the beauty of open source is you're, you're kind of crowdsourcing, if you will, this massive community of developers that are creating just an incredible amount of innovation at incredible speed. And it's a great way to ensure that you avoid vendor lock-in. So enterprises of all types are looking to open solutions as a way both of innovating faster and getting protection. And that commitment is something certainly Red Hat has tapped into. It's behind the great success of Red Hat. And it's something that frankly is permeating throughout IBM in that we're very committed to driving this sort of open approach. And that means that, you know, we need to ensure that people can get access to the innovation they need, run it where they want, and ensure that they feel that they have choice. And the choice, I think, is is a key part of it that isn't really coming through in some of the narrative. There's a lot of discussion about how you should actually pick, should you go cloud? I remember when it was either you should stay on site or should you go go to cloud? And we, we had a long discussion there. Uh, hybrid cloud really mm -hmm. does seem to have come of age where it's 
it's a, a realistic kind of well, no, no, compromise is probably the wrong word, but it's it's a trade off between doing all of one thing or all another. And for most enterprises, that doesn't actually seem to be the choice that's that's actually viable for them. So hybrid seems like it's actually just the practical approach. Would that be accurate? Well, our, our, our studies have shown that if you look statistically at the set of workload that's moved to cloud, you know, something like 20% of workloads have only moved to cloud, meaning the other 80% is experiencing barriers to move. And mm -hmm. some of those barriers is figuring out what to do with all this data that's sitting on-prem or, you know, these, these applications that have years and years of intelligence baked into them that cannot easily be ported. And so organizations are looking to hybrid approaches because they give them more choice. It helps them deal with fragmentation, meaning as I move more workload, I have consistent skill set. It helps me extend my existing investments and bring it into the cloud world. And all those things, again, are done with consistent security. That's really important, right? Organizations need to make sure they're protecting their assets, their data throughout, you know, leveraging a consistent platform. So that's really the benefit of the hybrid approach. It essentially is going to enable these organizations to unlock more workload and gain the acceleration and the transformative effect of cloud. And that's why I think they're really, that's why it's becoming a necessity, right? Because they just can't get that 80% to move yet. Yeah, and I've, I've long said that the cloud is a state of mind rather than a particular location. It's, it's more about an operational model of how you do things. So hearing that mm -hmm. we've only got 20% of workloads have moved to this new way of doing things does rather suggest that there's a lot more work to be done. What for those organizations that are just looking to do this now, or they've they've done a bit of it and they're looking for those next new workloads, where do you see mm -hmm. customers struggling the most and, and where do you think that IBM can help them there? Well, um, boy, where are they struggling the most? First, I think skills. I mean, they have to figure out a new set of technologies to go and transition from this old world to the new. And at the heart of that is lots of really critical debates. Like, how do they modernize the way that they do software delivery for many enterprises, right? Embrace new ways of doing software delivery. How do they deal with the data issues that arise from where the data sits, their obligations for data protection? Um, what happens if the data spans multiple different places, but you have to provide high quality performance and security? These are all parts of issues that, you know, span different environments. And so they have to figure out how to manage those kinds of things and make it work in one place. I think the benefit of partnering, you know, with Amazon is clearly there's a huge, you know, customer base that's interested in Amazon. I think the benefit of the IBM partnership is, you know, we can help to go and unlock some of those new workloads and find ways to get that cloud benefit and help to move them to the cloud faster. Again, with that consistency of experience. And that's why I think it's a good match partnership. We're, we're giving more customers choice. We're helping them to unlock innovation substantially faster. Right. And so for people who, who might want to just get started with that, how would they approach this? Do, do you think people might have some experience with AWS? It's, it's almost difficult not to these days. But for those who aren't familiar with the Red Hat on AWS, with OpenShift on, on AWS, how would they get started with you to, to explore what's possible? Well, one of the things that we're offering to our clients is a service that we refer to as IDM Garage. It's, it's a, it's a you know, an engagement model, if you will, within IBM, where we work with our clients and we really help them to do co-creation. So help to understand their business problem or, you know, the target state of where they want their IT to get to. And in working with them in co-creation, you know, we help them to affect that transition. Let's say that it's about, you know, delivering business applications faster. Let's say it's about modernizing the applications they have or offering new services, new business models, again, all in the spirit of co-creation. And we found that to be really popular. Um, it's a great way to get started. We, uh, we leverage a design thinking approach. They can think about the customer experience and their outcome if they're creating new business processes, new applications, and then really help them to uplift their skills and you know, get ready to uh, adopt cloud technology and everything that they do. It, it sounds like this is a, a lot of established workloads that people already have in their organizations. It, it's already there. It's generating real money. It's it's not those experimental workloads that we saw early on, which was a, well, let's try this. Cloud is a fabulous way where we can run some experiments. And if it doesn't work, we just turn it off again. These sound like a lot more workloads that are kind of more important to the business. Is that be true? Yeah, I think that's true. Now, I wouldn't say they're just existing workloads because I think there's lots of new business innovation that many of our, you know, 
clients want to go and launch. And so this gives them an opportunity to do that new innovation, but not forget the past, meaning they can bring it forward and bring it forward into an integrated experience. I mean, that's what everyone demands of a true digital business, right? They expect that your experience is integrated, that it's responsive, that it's targeted and personalized. And the only way to do that is to allow for experimentation that integrates in with the you know, standard business processes and things that you did before. And so you need to be able to connect those things together seamlessly. Right. So it sounds like it's it's a transition more than a, you know, creating new thing completely from scratch. It's, well, look, we've done a lot of innovation over the past decade or so in cloud. We know what works, but we still have workloads that people clearly know and value. How do we put those things together and do it in such a way that yeah. we maintain the flexibility to be able to make new changes as we as we learn new things? Yeah, leverage what you've got, play to your strengths. I mean, that's that's how you create speed. If you have to reinvent the wheel every time, it's going to be a slow roll. Yeah, and that does seem like a, an area where an organization probably at this point should be looking to partner with other people who have done the hard yards. They've they've already figured this out. What, as you say, why go and make all of these obvious errors yourself when you're, you're starting from scratch when there's a wealth of experience out there and particularly this whole ecosystem that exists around around open software. Uh, in, in fact, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the ecosystem opportunities that are there because Red Hat's been part of this for a very long time. AWS has a very broad ecosystem as we're all familiar with being here at reInvent yet again. How does that ecosystem play into what's possible? I, well, I, let me explain why I think IBM brings a different dimension to that trio, right? IBM brings deep industry expertise. I mean, we've long worked with all of our clients, our partners on solving some of their biggest business problems and being embedded in the thing that they do. So we have deep knowledge of their enterprise challenges, where they're trying to take them, deep knowledge of their business processes. We're able to bring that, that industry know-how mixed with you know, Red Hat's approach to an open foundational platform coupled with, you know, the great infrastructure you can get from Amazon. And, you know, that's a great sort of powerful combination that we can bring to each of our clients. And, you know, maybe just to bring it back a little bit to that idea of, okay, so what's the role in cloud packs in that? I mean, cloud packs are the kind of software that we've built to enable enterprises to run their essential business processes, right? And the essential digital operations that they run, everything from, security to protecting their data or giving them powerful data tools to implement AI and, you know, to implement AI algorithms in the heart of their business or giving them powerful automation capabilities so they can digitize their operations and also make sure those things are going to run effectively. It's those kinds of capabilities that we're bringing in the form of cloud packs. Think of that as that, that substrate that runs a digital business that now can be brought through, right, running on AWS infrastructure through this integration that we've done. Right, so basically taking things that are as a prepackaged module that we can just grab that module, drop it in and, and start using it rather than having to build it ourselves from scratch. That's right, they can, and they can leverage those powerful capabilities and get focused on innovating the things that matter, right? So it's a huge accelerant to getting business value. It, it does sound a lot easier than uh, trying to learn how to do the complex sort of deep learning and linear algorithms that, that are involved in machine learning. I I have looked into it a bit and trying to manage that sort of deep maths. It's, I think I'd much rather just just grab one off the shelf, plug it in, and and just use it. Yeah, it's also better than writing assembler code, which was some of my first programming experiences as well. So I think the software industry has moved on just a little bit since then. <laughs> I, I think we have. So I do not miss the days of, of handwriting assembler at all. Uh, sometimes for nostalgia reasons, but uh, if we want to get things done, I think I'd much rather work in, in something a little higher level. <laughs> I agree. So thank you so much for my for my guest there, Mike Gilfix, Chief Product Officer for IBM Cloud Packs from IBM. This has been the Cube's coverage of AWS reInvent 2020 and the APN Partner Experience. I've been your host, Justin Warren. Make sure you come back and join us for more coverage later on.